G'day there guys, it's your Aussie hubby Marky, back at it again with another r slash am I the a-hole video. Now with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody contentious opinions. Our first post today is by user ElephantRainbow2, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my autistic brother the truth when he asked me why women don't like him? So, I've got a younger brother, 24, with Asperger's and he is very high functioning, albeit with his quirks. Recently, I've moved back home during the stay at home orders to look after my parents. My brother still lives with them. I find out he's been trying to date in recent months and confessed it's been pretty unsuccessful for him. He even got to go on a first date, but his date literally got up and left after about a half an hour. I know exactly the reason why and it's not flattering. For one thing, my parents coddled him since he was a kid because he was on the spectrum and was the only boy in our family. My mum in particular always told him he was smarter and more advanced than everyone else who was neurotypical. This has led to his belief today that he genuinely is smarter than everyone else, especially women who he thinks are inherently irrational, illogical people. So, I know how he interacts with women like me or his other sisters. He tends to say very hurtful things first, and when you get upset, he will then say things like, you're being irrational, hysterical, illogical, I'm just being honest and you can't accept it. This is like his catchphrase over the years, and it drives us absolutely insane. Anyways, when he asked me, I basically said, listen, the truth is your way of talking to women can come across as extremely demeaning and borderline sexist and told him he acts like he can read every woman perfectly when he's pretty much always wrong. This struck the wrong nerve with him and he later complained to my parents that I attacked him over things he can't control. Now I'm in hot water for ruining his confidence and I feel both bad and kind of relieved at the same time. This was the first time in my life that I told him how annoying his behavior is because growing up, our mom always blamed us whenever he got upset. But maybe I was too harsh? Am I the a-hole for telling him what I said? Not the a-hole. He asked and you gave a reasonable answer. It doesn't even sound like you were being unnecessarily harsh. Also, it's kind of hilarious that he calls women irrational, but he loses it after being told the truth. I would stop coddling him. His autism doesn't give him a free pass to be a jerk. Sorry bro, I'm just being honest and you can't accept it. Stop being so hysterical. Our next post is by Katty Kebab, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my sister-in-law that she can't say her stillborn baby matters less than her living children? As a background, my sister-in-law had three living children before her stillbirth and then gave birth to another living child two years later. Her four Earthside children have fairly common names, like Emma, Lauren, Sophie, and Andrew. Her stillborn daughter has a more unorthodox name, Something like Solstice? I have one son born sleeping and had several miscarriages. I have no living children, but I am a mum to a little boy up in heaven. Anyways, at Christmas, many of our family members got to meet their new baby for the first time. The subject of how his name was chosen came up, which led to my grandmother asking why their stillborn daughter had such an unusual name compared to their living children. My sister-in-law explained that they gave their daughter a guilty pleasure name because it mattered less. She said she wouldn't put her living children through the experience of having such an uncommon name, but that it didn't matter when it came to their daughter because she didn't have a life to live with her name. She even joked that she spent a quarter of the time picking out her daughter's name that they did choosing their other children's names because it just didn't matter and they could do whatever. It hurt me to hear her say that. I've spent six years feeling like I have no right to call myself a mother and feeling excluded from the mums club because my son died from circumstances beyond my control before I even got to hold him. To have my sister-in-law, who I have supported through each and every one of her pregnancies, who I held and comforted through her stillbirth, say that her child didn't matter because she wasn't alive, that hurt. It felt very intensely personal. I was right across from her at the table, and she said it with no remorse. I don't care if it took her five minutes or five days to choose a name for her child. I care that she said it didn't matter. I haven't said a word about it since then, but I lost my job, I've had too much time to think, 
and I keep replaying the whole thing over and over in my mind. I've been stewing about it. I keep drawing away from her and I feel guilty, so I called her and told her that I had been really hurt by what she said. She was very callous immediately, telling me to get over myself and not to tell her how to live her life. I got very upset and told her she couldn't talk about her daughter like she mattered less and she just outright said, she does matter less. I just started to cry. I hung up and my husband consoled me for a while, but my brother called me to chew me out, saying I'd made his wife upset and she was already busy with their children and she didn't need to babysit me as well. I've gotten texts and calls from half of the family, most of them blaming me for not moving past my son's death. My own mother told me it was time to start pursuing new family planning options and that I was taking my distress from my loss out on my sister-in-law. Reddit, am I the asshole for telling my sister-in-law that she can't say that her child doesn't matter? I'm gonna let you guys decide that one. Our next post is by user, grandparent question. Am I the a-hole for treating my two daughters' pregnancies differently? When my oldest told me she was pregnant, she was still in college, unemployed, and the baby's father was refusing to be involved. I was not thrilled, but I provided all the help I could and took care of her. I was having a health crisis at the time, so I was very stressed out. I love my grandchild, but the birth didn't exactly happen in the happiest of circumstances. My oldest daughter ended up back in a relationship with the baby's father, and they are happy and stable now. My youngest daughter announced her pregnancy a few months ago, and the situation cannot be more different. She's married to her husband, who she's been with for several years, they're both financially stable, and the baby is clearly planned. I have had zero stress dealing with my daughter's pregnancy this time, and I've been generally happy about it. I was unknowingly proving I was more excited this time around, which I have since corrected. I also planned a baby shower for my youngest, which I didn't do for my oldest. My oldest is furious. I can imagine why, but I feel she should understand how different the circumstances were. She said some really hurtful things to me, and has prevented me from seeing my grandchild, even on the phone. I have already apologized a few times, but it hasn't made a difference. My youngest is now having some pregnancy-related health issues, and we're feeling very scared. I got a text from my oldest yesterday that if it were her having a health scare during her pregnancy, I would have probably celebrated. I broke down crying because I was so hurt. Am I wrong here? Not the a-hole, based on your version of the differences between pregnancies. I was like your oldest daughter and my sister was like your youngest. While you are not the a-hole, your oldest daughter is probably feeling hurt and somewhat jealous right now. It can be hard to be the kid seen as the effed up. Even if you don't see your oldest that way, she probably feels that way and watching how you've treated the youngest has exasperated it. Oldest could be handling it better, but she is probably feeling a storm of emotions as well. Sister competition is lifelong and can be rough sometimes. Did you miss the part where OP was having a health crisis at the time? She wasn't physically, mentally, or even emotionally in a place to support a young daughter who got knocked up and she did it the best she could regardless of the circumstances. OP has her health back and years of maturity now, so her reaction to the second daughter's pregnancy, which was a planned event, is understandably different. It sucks for the oldest daughter that she didn't get a baby shower or had to deal with being knocked up in college, but she is being selfish for not reading all the context surrounding that pregnancy. She's not the a-hole, but the daughter is being unnecessarily cruel. Our next post is by user, Shaving Gator, titled, Am I the a-hole for shaming my girlfriend into shaving her legs? Throw away because my girl uses Reddit and browses this sub somewhat often. My, male 22, girlfriend 23, of two years, isn't exactly the hippie free spirit, my hairy body is beautiful type, but she definitely never developed the habit of shaving consistently. She says it takes a long time. She's very tall, so that makes sense for her legs. Her skin is sensitive, so she's prone to bad razor burn, and she always manages to nick herself and bleed a lot. She pretty much only shaves when the hair is physically irritating her skin. It doesn't necessarily bother me because I love her for who she is, but I do have a preference towards smooth, silky skin. Who wouldn't, right? 
Earlier this evening, we were enjoying a shower together, and she mentioned how she thought it was time to shave her underarms. She said the hair was starting to get on her nerves, and she wanted it gone. Once she finished that up, she turned to her legs and said something along the lines of, I think these are going to be up next soon. That hair is starting to bother me now, too. Now, her leg hair was long, and even the lightness of the strands couldn't cover up how much was there. It was bad. So a bit harshly and sarcastically, I will admit, I said, yeah, you think it's time to shave your legs? How long has it been? And she looked at me for a moment, then started getting weepy eyed. So I asked her what the deal was, and she said, I thought it didn't bother you that I don't shave. It hasn't been an issue this whole relationship, and now I feel like I'm being shamed. I explained to her what I explained above, that I don't care that she doesn't shave, but I still preferred touching smooth legs and underarms. She remained pretty quiet, so I started trying to coax her out of the shower so we could finish up and be done. She refused, saying that she was going to go ahead and shave her legs. I just left the bathroom. A whole ass half hour later, she emerged, presented her smooth legs to me, and has been sitting quietly since then. Right now, I'm frustrated that she just spent 30 extra minutes making a point. I'm frustrated that she's acting mad at me for agreeing that she should do something she already said she wanted to do, and I just have to know if I should feel bad and say sorry, or if I should just let her get her moping out and then move on. Every time I read stories like this, I am amazed at how men who are supposed to be in love with their girlfriends still manage to prioritize their preference for a certain body type or certain grooming habits over their girlfriend's own personal preferences and physical comfort. Even if you don't care about the trouble and pain shaving causes her, have you ever stopped to think that because her legs grow hair, mean it's supposed to be there? That it's natural? That you shouldn't be such a spineless idiot and try to make her think that it's gross to have hair on her body? Good God. I'm also pissed off by the, she's acting mad. Dude, she is mad and she has every right to be mad. Apologize to her and pray that she ever lets you touch her again. You're the a-hole. Yikes. He literally said, I don't mind, but... And then told us how he told his girlfriend in the worst way possible, making her feel bad, and then proceeded with the worst kind of apology he could make the, I am sorry you feel that way, but I am right. And when she finally did what he whined about, he was like, she took so long and was still mad at me? How dare she? It's not like I shamed her into doing something that ends with her getting hurt each time, but also with the extra hurt of what I said. And he wonders why she's still mad at him. It was like when your parents told you what you were wearing was horrible and made you change clothes, and now you are uncomfortable in clothes they complained that you weren't smiling. Jeez. Our next post is by user JazzLikeSugar5, titled... Am I the a-hole for telling my husband I hate his mentally disabled brother and that I will never form a relationship with him? There's a lot going on here, but I'll keep it as short as possible. My husband and I live fairly close to his parents, like 15 minutes away, and his brother has severe intellectual disabilities at age 36. My husband is a doctor, and with the pandemic, we have decided to live apart for the time being so he doesn't have to worry about accidentally infecting me. So now I've moved in with my in-laws and his brother. I love his in-laws like my own parents. His brother, however, is another story. He is disabled, but he has an incredibly foul mouth and very offensive opinions that he's formed from years of surfing deep corners of the internet. But he is disabled and is not all there sometimes. So I do my best to help out and keep my mouth shut. Last Saturday, I was going on a walk with him, daily exercise when we were walking past the big grocery store parking lots. We see a dad and son loading groceries into their car, and my brother-in-law started yelling racial insults at them. They were Asian. I was horrified, and I tried to pull him away, but it was heartbreaking to see the look on the little boy's face and the exhausted slash defeated expression on his dad's face as they drove away. I was so angry that night that I called my husband and basically told him that I will rent a hotel room myself because I can't stand another minute in the same house as his brother. It's been a week and my husband has told me he can't sleep because he's so upset over what I've told him. I admit I used harsh words and fully laid out my feelings. He said he still loves his brother and can't stand the thought of us never getting along. Am I the a-hole for telling him directly how I felt about his brother? 
I'm wondering if I should have just kept to myself. What do you guys think? Our next post is by user ForgotLife01, titled, Am I the a-hole for saying it's your decision to my girlfriend for sleeping in the bathtub? My girlfriend is an extremely light sleeper, and she needs to be very tired or drunk slash high to sleep when I'm in the same bed. She can't fall asleep with me in bed. According to her observations, I move a lot in bed, which makes her move, and I snore quite a lot and breathe heavily. I am overweight, but not too much to be classed as dangerous. So I am six foot and she is five foot. So when I move, the entire bed moves and wakes her up. I also speak in my sleep sometimes, which is something she has recorded to show me. Now she's kind of blaming me for some things. She has had many exams that she didn't study enough for because she couldn't sleep all night due to me, her sleep schedule is very bad right now, and she sleeps almost always during the daytime because she can't get any night sleep. She uses earplugs, but they can't block all the sound or my movements. We also live in my parents' house, which with not enough rooms, which means she has no other choice. Plus, the living room is not an option neither. She woke me up at 1am, saying she will be sleeping in the bathtub because she can't take it, and she really has to sleep because she has to study for a test tomorrow, and she only has one day because she has been sleeping all day instead of a normal full night's sleep. I told her, well, that's your decision then, and she told me, why can't you do something about it? Just buy one of those things where it can make you snore less. But I think they would make me look like a fool. She said go to the doctor, but what will the doctor do to my movements and my snoring? Once she told me to lose weight, which kind of hurt my feelings, but she said it is for the best so I could stop snoring. She said she will be sleeping in the bathtub until I fix it. I told her, okay then, that's your decision, and she went on to call me insensitive and that I don't care about her enough to do enough, and that I'm a jerk. Edit, once my girlfriend asked me to sleep on the couch during her exam week, my mum had to go to work in the morning and she found me on the couch. She went up to my girlfriend and yelled at her and said that it's not my fault that I'm snoring and that she should put up with it. Ever since then, she sleeps somewhere else instead of asking me. Am I the a-hole? You know what, you should just look like a fool. Sleep deprivation is torturous. That is not an exaggeration. It's forbidden under the Geneva Convention to deny sleep to your captives. Your desire to look cool while you're frickin' sleeping does not outweigh her need to sleep. If your snoring is that bad, there's a fair chance you have sleep apnea, which can kill you. You should see a doctor. You too should also look into getting a better mattress, which won't transfer so much of your motion. You're the a-hole. Our next post is by user Awkward Lies, titled, Am I the a-hole for not asking my singer friend to sing at our wedding, slash refusing to allow her to gift us her singing voice? This is very awkward, and I'm not sure who to ask, so I decided to post on here. My boyfriend proposed last year around Christmas, and of course, I immediately said yes, and together we have been very excitedly planning our wedding. We were due for September this year, but have obviously put everything on halt. One of my friends, Abigail, is a singer. She has a very gospel-y kind of voice, but as awful as it sounds, all I think when she sings is, this is wobbly, and I have to fight to keep a straight face. She's not awful, but it's really not my cup of tea. Obviously, I would never say that to her, but I do encourage her passion, because one day she wants to turn her hobby into a career. I always respond in the group chat with constructive feedback when she sends us voice clips, asking for it, and if it's very bad, I'll just stay quiet and not say anything at all. Now recently in January, a little-known music producer, I think, retweeted a video of her singing, and she is taking this as her sign that she is about to break it big. She asked why I hadn't asked her to sing in our wedding, and I answered her honestly that I want her there in a friend capacity, not there to work. She then said she insisted on gifting us the song to our first dance. I really, really don't want her to do this, so I told her I would need to square it with my fiancé, as we are all making this decision together. Thankfully, he was on board with me, and I texted her ASAP to say that fiancé wasn't keen on the idea, because he really wants X-Band to play instead. 
She became upset in our group chats, and quite a few of my friends are texting me, telling me I should give her the platform, and that I'm being a bad friend, and an a-hole, and that I'm being selfish. Not the a-hole. Here it goes, my friends. The second anybody you know hears about your wedding, they're gonna start telling you what to do. But it's your wedding, and if you don't want your first dance to be sang by someone whose voice you don't care for, you have every right to do something else. Put your foot down and let Abigail stay butthurt. Your wedding is about you, not her. And also, she's not gifting you her voice. She wants the attention, and for all your guests to hear her. She's not doing this for you, she's doing this for her. Not the a-hole. Our next post is by user Washed Frame, titled, Would I be the a-hole if I report my co-worker's drug use to my boss after seeing him at an NA meeting? So, my brother-in-law is staying with us right now and was conferencing into his usual NA meeting from the living room. Our only home computer is a wired desktop in the living room. We usually clear out to give him privacy, but in this case, I forgot my phone somewhere in there and had to quickly go looking for it. I happened to go in right in the middle of someone I recognized as my co-workers sharing their struggles with drug abuse and strong concerns about potential relapse. We work in a job in which human lives are indirectly at stake, and to be compromised at any point during work is unquestionably a risk. We have once yearly drug testing, and once in a while, we have random drug testing, but it's been years since I've been asked to do a random one. I've been really broken up about whether I should say anything though, because of course, NA is supposed to be private and confidential, and he hasn't relapsed yet, he's just concerned he might. I'm so broken up over this, but I can't talk to many people about it without raising suspicion about who it might be, which would be much worse than just quietly reporting it to the appropriate person. I don't know what will happen if I report him. It might be more frequent random drug tests, maybe they'll fire him, I don't know. It's a terrible time to lose your job. The guy is working a program and hasn't actually relapsed. We all have vices and problems. But I also know I would never forgive myself if he were to relapse and screw up his work in a way that risks innocent people who trust us. Would I be the a-hole if I report him? Our next post is by Am I the A-hole Throwaway 252? Titled Am I the A-hole for not wanting my disabled sister-in-law to come live with us? My husband and I have been together for about 10 years. We have three young kids and a fairly hectic life, as you can imagine. My husband has a sister who has cerebral palsy. She's 38 years old, but cognitively has the development of about a five-year-old. She can't really speak clearly, but she can make some sounds for common words to say what she needs. My husband can understand her better than I can, but I'm trying to get better. She's not permanently wheelchair-bound, but she can't go upstairs or walk long distances, so she does have some medical equipment to help. She needs help doing everything for her basic care, from bathing to dressing to feeding. He obviously grew up with her, so he's very used to everything she needs. When we go to visit my in-laws, it always seems to me like their entire livelihood revolves around her. She also throws big tantrums when she doesn't get what she wants. There ends up being a lot of yelling from all sides. I find the whole environment so stressful and tense, but it's what they're used to. My husband's parents are getting older, and I think it's getting more difficult to care for her. My husband approached me a few weeks ago, saying he thinks it's time his sister come to live with us. My whole world came to a screeching halt. We had talked about us helping financially and coordinating care before, but never about her actually coming to live with us. In truth, I just can't picture us staying afloat while adding her into the mix at our house. We have three kids under six. It's a madhouse here all the time already. If she lived here, we would need to have three kids in one bedroom. We'd also need to get some serious modifications to our house because it's not handicap friendly. Also, I truly think this would ruin the relationships we are building with our kids. I think my husband and I would have to spend so much time and energy caring for his sister that we wouldn't be able to focus on our own kids. This breaks my heart and is the big deal breaker for me. I suggested moving his family closer to us. They currently live five hours away and seeing how we can help without them living with us. I said we needed to start looking into some appropriate assisted living facilities and he flipped out on me. He said he promised his mum he would take care of his sister. She's his blood, etc. 
I understand it's his sister, but I also feel he has his own family to consider too, that he's completely ignoring in this equation. Obviously, this is a big screw up on both of our parts to not discuss this in detail much earlier on. I can't picture us managing this with three kids, and it just makes me sad to think of us 30 plus years down the road when we're empty nesters, and always having his sister there by our side. To be honest, if I knew his sister was coming to live with us forever was a total mandatory for him, it might have meant the end of our relationship. Edit. Wow, this post blew up a little bit. Thanks for everyone's replies. I am reading through them, and it's helpful to see from all sides. I do want to clarify that it's not that we hadn't talked about this at all. We had talked about it, but the extent of support we had talked about was financial support and coordinating outside care. We had never discussed her coming to live with us. I understand it was a miss to not discuss that overtly, but it felt like we had a solid plan before that, about helping in all other ways and getting her proper care as she and we get older. So I think this has been a change of heart now that it's becoming real. She's his blood, but you're his spouse. Once he married you, he committed to you as his future. Not that he was to abandon his family, but your feelings are now paramount in his new life. He absolutely must give fair assessment to your thoughts on anything that affects the household and your family to this degree. You are not the a-hole. He wants this, but I want to know, seriously, how much he will be the primary caregiver and how much he expects you to do. Even if he does plan to take care of her exclusively, she still becomes a huge disrupt in your lives and household. Will you still be able to go on vacation together? Will someone always need to be in the house with her? Will her loud nature make you all unhappy? Will this turn into a bitter household? Stand fudging firm on this. Tell him, as you have, that you are willing to compromise so that your family becomes a part of her caregiving, by living nearby, by contributing financially to an outside care facility. But do not, do not let yourself contribute to the unhappy collapse of your own home and marriage by taking in someone you do not want to take in. Again, you are not an a-hole. Our last post for the day is by user Pete the Doughboy, titled, Am I the a-hole for not renting to friends slash family? I'm a landlord in a relatively small city in New England, less than 15,000 year-round residents. I inherited several rental properties, but my company has been steadily growing so that we are now the largest property holders in the city and control roughly 60% of residential rentals. This problem has cropped up over the years, and I always feel very torn about it, as I can see both sides of the argument and thought I would see what the internet has to say. I never rent to friends and family. No exceptions. In the beginning of my career, I leased an apartment to a friend who wasn't the most qualified, and subsequently lost her job. I gave her way more slack than I normally would give anyone, but at the end, she ended up owing almost $8,000 in rent, and I had to evict her and her family. It obviously destroyed the relationship, hurt my business, and I was vilified to mutual friends. Since then, I have never done it again. The issue is that it is a very tight rental market. Our city has a shortage of rentals, and we often receive 50 plus applications for a two bedroom apartment. A few times over the years, I've been approached by friends who needed a rental. People who are qualified, have good jobs and great history with other landlords in the city, people I would happily rented to if they weren't my friends and family. Am I the a-hole for not renting to them just because I know them? I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I just value my relationships and this dynamic. Them owing me 1000 plus a month, slash calling me to chat, and oh, their faucet is leaking, oh crazy. That would almost certainly change things between us. Let me have it. Am I the a-hole? I don't know guys, what do you guys think of this one? This has been Marky, I hope you enjoyed this episode today. Don't forget to subscribe to Marky2 and also my mate Storyhawk. We want to grow his channel and we want to get some memes out there. Click links are on the screen, I hope you guys have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!